Well, hello everybody and welcome back to G Bears Off Grid Ways, a homestead of the desert. We're out here at the tank and as you can see, I finished the woodwork today. And I brought a barrel up there to, so that I can measure. And this is gonna hold 14 of those, that size barrel, which is a 60 gallon. They call them 55 gallon, but uh, actually will hold 60 gallons. When they um, process these, <clears throat> these are all had organic material in them. When they process these, there's 55 gallons is right there. Now you have to leave that air space in the top, okay? So if you look, here's 50 and here's 55. So there it is at three and a half inches. And there's my next three and a half inches right there. So it'll hold 60 gallons. So I call them 60 gallon. The little blue ones that I have down at the uh, grow house, those are rated as um, 15 gallon, but they'll actually hold 20. So I call those 20 gallon. Anyway, when they're sitting here with water in them, that's all I need. So I'll be uh, drilling a hole in the bottom of this, like right about here somewhere. And I'll be putting in a uh, PVC threaded fitting sealed into the unit so that uh, it stays there. And then uh, <clears throat> I'll be running one inch um, uh, PVC pipe from one unit to the other. Excuse me, the wind just blew my microphone right out of my ear or my earplug out of my ear and the microphone is attached to that. So anyway, uh, yeah, that, they'll be attached going all the way around. So I estimated um, by using a stick and I put marks on here to measure the, the width of the barrels going all the way around and it'll hold 14 barrels all the way around this. I'll walk all the way around so you can see. And it comes right up to the staircase there. Okay, so it'll hold 14 barrels all the way around and 14 barrels at 60 gallons each is 840 gallons. Okay. So I have 2,500 gallon tank here. So the total that I'll be able to store at this location is 3,340 gallons. All right. Now, the truck that comes out hauls 3,700 gallons. So, and I'll never be completely empty when he gets here. So I, I usually want to call by the time I get down to 500 gallons right there because 500 gallons isn't going to last very long. So I need to get him out to refill so if he can't get out right away, I'll still have water for a while. But here's what my plan is. <clears throat> I'm going to get um, two 250 gallon totes from the place where I buy the barrels. And remember, I get these barrels for $8 each, but I can get these totes for $80 each. So $160, I can get, uh, I can have 500 gallons with two totes sitting right down there by the garden house. And then plus my um, 60 gallon and my 80 gallons there, that'll give me like 600 and something gallons of water down there, right, for, just for irrigation alone. And then if it runs a little low on that because of a hot, super hot summer, then I'll be able to just drain some off of this because I have a garden hose at the cabin. I can just run a garden hose over there and fill my tanks back up and dr run this down. And then uh, <clears throat> I can, if I need to, I can call for a refill. Now the second guy I have for doing refills, um, he'll normally, he, the second guy is actually the guy that comes out with 3,700 gallons. The first guy that I ever had come out has two trucks. He has a 2,500 gallon and a 2,000 gallon. So if I get down 2,000 gallons and it's going into the winter months, I'll call and have this thing filled up. Um, hopefully he's still in business. I haven't heard from him in a long time. Now I'm gonna give him a call and see if he is. So <clears throat> with that being said, um, I should have plenty of water to get me through even the hottest of hot summers and then I'll be working next is going to be working on um, getting the area between the two containers closed off so that I can uh, um, collect water off the roofs of everything. And that's going to be something like uh, 1,200 square feet of uh, 
water catchment that'll all go down into one gutter on the other side of the blue container. And yes, I'm still planning on painting these containers, but remember what my saying well, way back in the beginning, uh, function first, pretty later. I'll take care of the function part of everything first. All right. Now, before I um, close this video off, I do want to come down here and uh, make mention of one more thing. And we get, we're having another wind event. It's been windy every day, and I mean, you know, 25, 26 mile an hour gusts. Anyway, let me go inside here. Anyway, you remember um, I had ordered on eBay from a company a 220 amp um, meter here for here, which was a thermodyne unit. Okay, now I will later on, I will let you know the company, the, the, the seller that I bought this from, because I am not happy with their customer service at all. Since February, the first week of February, when that unit was not working, all it did was the, 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 the screen would freeze and it wouldn't change like this one's changing, telling me the different uh, um, outputs and uh, uh, my maximums and, you know, the peaks and that stuff. Uh, it, it would just freeze at one point and I would have to wait until there was no wind, disconnect it from the battery system and... Um, then reconnect it and it would reboot and work again, but only for a couple hours then it would freeze up So all I would ask these guys was to, to replace it I didn't ask them for my money back or anything like that and I have gotten multiple different emails from different people from that company who just constantly tried to say it was my fault that it's not working that I hooked it up and I got 60 volts of electricity from high winds and all that stuff. This is the one I had before theirs. I had this one hooked up at a 150 amp system and I wanted the 220 amp system because their site, when I, when I went on eBay, they said that that um, turbine, the, the uh, PMA, could put out more than what it was rated for in high winds. And I didn't want to blow things up out here. So I went to the 220 amp unit. But since theirs wasn't working, I put the 150 amp back in and it's been working just fine ever since. And there's nothing different about the way it's connected. It's connected exactly the same way. As a matter of fact, you can see where I put these uh, temporary clips in here. Um, a wire nut on here and a... Uh, a, a squash nut or a uh, whatever you want, a butt connector in between there uh, because I was gonna planning on getting the 220 amp unit back and putting it back in here and taking this one out. These idiots down there have given me nothing but grief. And then they, I, I said, what, what do I have to do to return this to get one? So one guy named Ben sent me an email with an address to send it back to Thermodyne. So I went down to the post office at my own expense and I sent the unit back to them at that, that address that they told me to. Okay, and I sent it signature required. Now, all of a sudden, uh, another month goes by, and then these idiots, a different person altogether, contacts me and says, um, we can't seem to locate the one you sent back. Um, please send us uh, tracking numbers and all of that. You know what? I'm done messing with these idiots. They, I, I told them this in an email. I said, I'm done messing with you. Just send me a new one. That's all I want to hear from you is that you have sent me a replacement for the one that you have in, in, in custody. You took my money in the first place. Then it took my money to send it a defective unit back to you. And now you're telling me you can't find it? What kind of business is that? And I tell you what. I will get the information together about that company and I will post it on my videos here so that everybody knows if you want customer service and backup warranty from those people, expect a bunch of heartache, a bunch of headaches, and a bunch of crap. Because that's all it is, is a bunch of crap. And yes, I am perturbed about this whole thing. There's, 
no reason in the world why they shouldn't have just said, okay, we're sending another one out with a return label, just put the return one in and we'll send it back. I have no idea why they didn't do that. But the, the way I've been treated, I wouldn't wish that upon my, my worst enemies. It was just ridiculous the way I was treated. I will, I will dig up all the emails. I have copies of every one of them. I'm going to go to Yelp. I'm going to go to eBay. I'm going to go to every place that I can. Better Business Bureau, because they're right here in Lancaster, California. I'm going to go to the uh, everything that I can, and I am going to give them the worst rating ever because that's the way I feel. That's what I got for service out of them. This is ridiculous. Everybody else I bought stuff from on eBay, if it was defective, I contacted them. They said, oh, we'll send you another one out with a return box. Put the uh, other one in the return box and we'll send it back. Why are these idiots treating me like this? I don't know, but I don't like it. And I'm sure you wouldn't like it either. Then they asked me to send them a video of, of the unit working after I mailed it back to them. One hand doesn't know what the other's doing. I'm telling you, I, it, I can't uh, quote exactly how many guys. I'd have to say there was probably um, six different people that emailed me back about the one that they have in their, in their hands right now. And they say they can't find. They're trying to rip me off and I don't like being ripped off. All right. That's all for today, everybody. G-Bear reminding you, give me a thumbs up down there if you like my videos. And uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you had, uh, thank you very much. And uh, if you'll notice, I did go over the uh, uh, 1.3K mark uh, today. Oh no, maybe even more than that. Somebody look it up and tell me where I'm at. <laughs> all right, that's it for everybody. Uh, thanks again for watching. G-Bear, signing off.